another Monday in the wood shop. It's Monday afternoon now. I've been busy doing other stuff. There's always a million little things to do and often a little thing takes you half a day or a day. Because I wanted to do something today that's kind of time sensitive. Tomorrow evening we have our regional bee club meeting. I mentioned this about a month ago that I built uh, 10 frames and put foundation in them and took them to the meeting. We have a little draw as a fundraiser for the association every month at our at our monthly meetings. And uh, so anyway, I'd like to add something to that draw if I can. Helps bring in a little more money from the membership, gives people, uh, you know, more uh, options to uh, win prizes and whatnot. And hopefully they can you know, enjoy the enjoy the things that I put in there. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be beekeeping stuff. It can be anything you put in there. Uh, whatever you want to donate. So, because I have a pretty good wood shop, not everybody does. Uh, I use that as an advantage to go ahead and build some uh, woodenware for uh, for the draws, and that's why I built frames for last time. Well this time what I'm going to do, this is kind of seasonal and a timely thing, is I'm going to build a, a frame assembly jig. That's not rocket science, uh, but there are a couple dimensions here that are really quite important. Uh, so those are the things that I really have to be careful with there. So I'll make this video on, on how I do that. Uh, I'm actually going to do it a different way than I have in the past. I've built maybe four of these to date and uh, this next one I'm going to build in a little different way and hopefully that works out. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I built that today so that overnight the glue dries and uh, then it's ready to go to the meeting tomorrow. Um, I'm wearing a nice shirt today, did you notice? And I just want to be real careful I don't get glue on this nice clean shirt. That waterproof glue is really disastrous to a shirt because uh, there is just nothing that will take it out. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. When I build equipment I usually diagram it out first using SketchUp on the computer. That helps me avoid making incorrect cuts etc. And I can see beforehand how things are going to fit together. I can then extract my dimensions off of that. I'm not doing that today. I'm doing it the old-fashioned way by guessing by golly. And so we'll see how this works out. So as you can see on this jig, the challenge making this jig is always cutting this out. That's a little bit of a crazy thing to try and cut. So I'm going to eliminate that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make each of the four sides in three pieces each. I'm going to have a center piece and then I'm going to have a bottom and a top piece. So I don't have to cut this out. All I have to do is glue the three pieces together and uh, that should suffice. <clears throat> Same here, this is kind of a lap joint. So again, center piece and then I'll put a piece on the bottom, piece on the top. So that'll be all edge glued together. That'll work really well. As far as joinery goes, I'll try to put all this together. I have to trim some of the pieces yet. Everything is ripped to width that should work. And then the length on some of the pieces I'm going to have to dial in. Okay, this is front, front and back. The critical dimension is side to side. The distance between these two sides is a critical dimension. And then also, once you make the inserts here, the critical dimension is the space between the insert and the edge of the jig. Of course, that space should be big enough to hold the end bar, not so tight that it's difficult to use, uh, not so loose that things get too loosey good. This is plenty loose, I find. The end bars flop around plenty. So we'll maybe try and try and tighten that up a little bit on this model that I'm building. You can kind of see what I'm planning here. I'm going to try and build this piece 
out of three parts instead of trying to mill it out of one part. This is called the dry fit. So you can kind of see how that went together. I'm going to wait till tomorrow uh, before I sand this. I'll just sand these inserts go in easily. Frames drop in nicely. that little build video. I don't have much else to show you today. It's a, kind of a short video day. I know I have a bunch of my videos. I appreciate uh, everybody watching. I appreciate the comments, the feedback. Uh, again, if there's, if there's something you want to see, let me know. Put my drone frames together. My other video, I was building these drone frames, so I put them together. What I didn't show you is, is I actually put a, a staple right in the middle just to keep that from sliding because it slides pretty easy in there and then just for ease of handling I wrap them into bundles of 10 and uh, I'll just use those up as I need they'll sit in the shed until I need them and they're not just fun <laughs>